Welcome to the Commodo uh, Supernet Q&A. So ask us anything. It's uh, a Q&A, AMA, whatever. Will. Ask ask us what you want. We'll try we to answer. Have time. We will uh, stay what here. What time frame uh, do you guys think uh, that uh, Komodo uh, can be uh, used also for storing uh, assets? For storing assets? Yes. Um, At what time can we use the uh, Agama wallet where uh, the okay, okay. I got stored, it. Uh, well, the assets themselves, uh, those asset chains, can be used already now from the technical point of view. They're fully implemented. You can just run them through the terminal via command line interface and issue transactions, receive coins, store them, whatever. Uh, you could even generate for the most asset chains already a receive a receipt address and, and already collect your wireless coins, for example, and store them. To have it fully available, uh, it's, yeah, I, I think a matter of weeks to months. We are still working uh, on a lot of, of core uh, technique, so we didn't have that much time to focus on a session implementation. Like we tried to get Komodo first fixed and running smooth on Agama, and once that's accomplished, all other assets going to be pulled in because basically they they, they are on the same technological layer. So, uh, could you uh, elaborate on the, the marketing plans of uh, Supernet uh, for the coming uh, half year? For the coming half year, well, we have a lot of of, of uh, expos and events coming. That's that's uh, one part. Of, of the marketing, and I'll give the word over to Audu. He'll have a lot of marketing things coming in the near future, in the next six months. Okay, I, I have also I'm one question. Well, about well I need to first answer the okay. previous one. <laughs> uh, Excuse me. Yeah, we, we, will, we have made a plan for the supernet marketing. Uh, we, we, have, we are creating like marketing segments mm -hmm. for e each product, product, and audience will have its own marketing segment. Uh, right now we have uh, Akama Wallet is one, then we have Commodo Platform and then we, we have a separate segment for developers. We call it Supernet Developer Segment. Uh, and then when we bring other products into market such as Pangia Poker, it will have its own How market big is segment. Your team for all these projects? Hmm? How big is your team for all these projects? We're close to uh, 40 people, something like that. Yeah, we maybe 40, time. like mm -hmm. depends. We have fu five full-time marketing people at the moment. Oh, and and when, when we need to hire more people, we can hire uh, when these products come online. But currently it's pretty much only Komodo that we are marketing a little bit. The other ones are not ready for marketing, such as Akama. It's still in the early beta testing and Pangia Poker is still waiting to be developed and ready, ready to go. So w once they are like marketing ready, then we can hire more people to do, do it. For now, we are just focusing on setting, the, making the groundwork. We will build the website, make the newsletters, uh, Twitter accounts and start building like the basic audience. If, if I have a marketing idea, where, where should I sh send my uh, idea to? Yeah, you can send it to talk, talk with us in the Slack channel. We are all there every day. So just send a message, share the great, great idea. That's the best way to go. And even we, we like to hire from the community. So if someone, someone comes there and has a great idea what they could do, use it to get funding. And that's what we've been talking about too. Uh, with Supernet, we, we have made a lot of investments in the cryptocurrency projects that we believe in. And, and they have done really well. We, uh, currently, we have like 50 or 60 million US dollars in capital. And, and uh, if we find a good place to put uh, the money in, then we, we could provide funding. And, and we are looking. James announced that he's willing to give you like one million budget to to some some team who's gonna market some of the supernet asset. So there, there's a lot we could do. Right now we are focusing on the groundwork and 
also the platform is coming together. So it's, it's, it's looking solid. good. Yeah. It's, it's pretty solid, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, just key, key uh, volume. Key value storage. Where, where, where can that be implemented in the future? And what are the okay. possibilities? I, I'll get to this question in just a moment, just again to, to get back to the marketing question, just from my technical point of view. What I set is called for the next six months, especially to provide a solid knowledge base for young developers, entrepreneurs, people just wanting to use Komodo and Supernet as a platform, as a basal layer for their own implementations and projects. So that is really something very important to, to just spread it because I'm seeing like most of the projects who've done really well, it's from, from a marketing aspect provided a very solid knowledge base for their developers. And once people start using your stuff, that's when, when, when it's like a fire, it starts spreading and then and, and gets all right. Yeah, I, I would say the main, main like purpose for marketing is, is to just make it easy for people to use is one thing, like provide all the, we are building like knowledge base and support, mm -hmm. try to provide good support for exactly. people. And then the second thing is to, to, to make the documentation and make it available mm -hmm. for developers. So because we are a platform, so we want other projects to come in and build, yeah, exactly. build with us exactly, yeah. and we also there's maybe the third point we could say is uh, approaching the other coin communities and explaining them how they can get involved in supernet mm -hmm. how they can integrate their own coin into agama wallet yes. you can become part of our decentralized exchange and exactly part of the supernet it, ecosystem yeah it's all about and connecting blockchains and yeah. We, we want to invite all the all the coin projects and communities to be part of part of supernet exactly yeah. so that's it good now to your key value storage um, just to put it as simple as possible it's basically just a, some sort of database on the blockchain so you're able to to make use of native blockchain functionality bitcoin as it implemented you're able to store data in form of an op return transaction that's what's happening with this key value storage we have a at the moment, yet it's just a very simple, basic uh, API. Like we have two commands: one to to search for uh, entries, and one to update or create them. And you're able to flag them. There are different flags. So, like, is it readable, readable, writable, whatever? And I see, for example, one implementation I started working on a concept for is a sort of blockchain uh, identification system so you would have something similar to OpenID but the difference would be it's uh, purely blockchain based we would use this uh, KV storage layer to store uh, public keys I'll, public key uh, will be stored there to ensure that only the person with the appropriate private key is able to authenticate and you could now uh, very basically store all the authentication information of all users on the blockchain. Now you provide an API layer. Any website, anybody could just uh, run a client, connect to the blockchain, and you just log in with your private key, decentralized. This would be some sort of decentralized authentication system, which I see is something very big. It's not implemented yet, it's nothing existent in that area. That could be a known project, a known small thing in the supernet ecosystem. That's How what I think. How would you see this implemented in science? Sorry? How would you see this implemented in science, for instance? In science? Yes, with research and things like that. Oh, okay. Uh, how, how would you see that user base? Well, the list and the possibilities in this yeah. area are huge. Like the list uh, it is endless. I could start now and stop talking about this tomorrow. I just try to, to take the, the, the first use case I think of now, knowledge sharing. Let's look at this topic, something very, very important nowadays because uh, scientists at academic circles are, are researching and there are a lot of countries which, which scientists research things that already have been researched. But due to the fact that the knowledge, for example, from US universities is not publicly accessible for those, it is very hard to, to share this knowledge, to access this knowledge. So basically, a lot of scientists' resources are being wasted for stuff that's already been researched and known of. And I see the blockchain 
in some extended version, being capable of, of taking care of this knowledge sharing. Like, we would have a data set with all the information, pictures, whatever, being spread to the users via, we could use any sort of decentralized uh, file system network, like BitTorrent or DHT layer to distribute the data. And then we use the blockchain, you know, for example, the Komodo platform, and the KV storage, um, K value storage to store the hashed, uh, the hashed information of the data set. So once you update that data set, you rehash it. So you ha basically are able to update information and knowledge and store the new hashed key on the blockchain. So you would have a versioning history, which would be publicly accessible. And the next thing is that the knowledge would be accessible from anywhere in the world. Nobody would basically be able to shut this down. But that's what's happening at the moment. If you host uh, uh, infos like that and you're not allowed to, you can face a really serious legal issues. And, and I don't, don't know, uh, Aaron Swartz maybe. That, that same layer, can it be applied? Uh, I know that there's blockchains offering like notarization services mm -hmm. for documents and exactly, yeah. stuff like mm -hmm. that, so mm -hmm. it could work. Anything, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, anything. Basically the same technological Play happening there, yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Any more questions, yeah, Lulu? Yeah. Uh, what's the position of uh, Supernet uh, technology about the risk of the fork uh, on Bitcoin? So this uh, this summer, so we had the program uh, about Bitcoin uh, protocol. Or I don't know exactly. Uh, Z Z segment or. Segwit uh, Seg Seg implementation. Yeah. What's the position? Yeah. What if if there is a fork on Bitcoin this summer? What's um, uh, there are no negative side effects for us combined yeah. with this. So but none yeah, of which I would know of. You have yeah, said something. It, yeah, these people have asked several times, like which chain do we use to notarize, or what would happen to the Commando platform notarizations if Bitcoin splits and the answer is just we, we would use the chain with, with the biggest hash rate to get the best security so we can just choose any chain to mm -hmm. that's the, it's dem that's demo crazy. the security. Yeah. It's basically it's demo crazy so clients will choose the chain with the with, uh, highest power that's, yeah. that's always that okay. and the other chain would be just a faulty with, fork chain. Uh, yeah. With governance, like one of the parts of the Komodo uh, platform, and that's really what I liked about it was the voting. So, like, how far do you think we could take that as far as like implementing projects? Yeah, and like immediately. That? Let's let's ready to use tech. Like we could we could set an setup for let's let's say we create a supernet foundation, need a president for the foundation. Okay, we set up a new set, the election set, and the whole user base gets one token, transparent, gets gets the spread. Well, and then we provide a recipient address for every person to be elected, mm -hmm. and we would have a system to transparently uh, assure, proof that there's a 100% democracy going on. So each vote would be a unique vote from one entity okay. which signed this vote. So I see that basically being usable right now. Right. So we could, of course, uh, extend this system and make it reusable. Yeah. Like like not setting up <coughs> one million set chains for every election, but try to make it more efficient, just use one chain, yeah. and something like that, yeah. So, a lot of use cases, yeah. Yeah, please. Yeah, yes. uh, is it possible for you to elaborate of uh, what, what's happening with cross-blockchain trading? Uh, I, I understood that uh, Komodo will uh, help and play a part in this. In, sorry? Cross blockchain trading. Okay, atomic uh, Swap. chain swaps. Okay, well, basically what's happening, we have like a decentralized uh, form of uh, exchanging different assets and tokens and coins. Uh, that's all happening on the supernet layer, combination with Komodo and whatever other currency you're using. And um, the pretty uh, interesting uh, thing and fact about this is that, that James coded it that way, that an um, that a non-spent output could be uh, marked for an order and used for an order, but at the same time be spendable for you. So you don't have to lock it down or something. Just the moment you spend the coin for another purpose, the order will just 
disappear. disappear. So that is uh, the advantage. So we're yeah, it's it's that's the first thing. And second thing is you have to imagine it's something like a decentralized order book, right? Orders are in, and once they are matching orders, they get fulfilled. Supernet, the core framework, assures that everything is legitimate and happens in a decentralized manner. I mean, the code is open source, so you can always check it up and see what is happening behind the GUI clients. Because I think there will be many, many different GUI implementations. I even see other users and uh, developers taking our uh, platform and using it for a known centralized version of this exchange system. They could, they could make it. They could make a centralized version of this because they basically have the whole trading engine already open sourced in, in our code. And the speed of this network? Well, we are confirmation depending. That uh, has to be kept in mind. Mm -hmm. But the order fulfillment and, and catches, we are close to real time. So I don't see any problems there. But still, we have uh, so that, that is security that we have to be confirmation dependent. I mean, we could extend this system and say, okay, our algorithm is going to check the used transaction fee. And if it's above a specific uh, limit, we could take it as, as already confirmed. So that is an option. Many Bitcoin services are doing it. There is still this little chance of having facing issues because there are very few little coins who don't have that high hash rate. So you could still try to scam something out. So, so the s safest way is always be confirmation dependent. How do you see the liquidity uh, being uh, yeah, grown in such a new environment? Uh, I think you can something about the liquidity provider. Yeah, so, so we, when we're talking about how to provide liquidity in an exchange, because that's like the problem with any exchange that la new, la new exchange launches, like who's going to be trading there if you cannot buy and sell, if there's no liquidity. And even today we have many decentralized exchanges, but it probably means that you are not able to have the liquidity there. So we solved it with the liquidity provider nodes that uh, anyone can launch and set up. We will try to make it as easy as possible. So even a non tech person, such as myself, I, I could be and I will be running one liquidity provider node, which just basically means that I will keep my wallet running, like my local wallet running, and I will have some coins. I could have Komodo and Bitcoin in, in my Akama wallet. And then I just set up some settings and it will automatically trade them. So I will have like sell and buy orders and someone wants to buy through the decentralized exchange, so then they are able to, I, I will be the other party providing the liquidity and I, I will like put buy and sell, so I, I, I potentially I will make small profit. Mm -hmm. And but then the real solution is, is we, are, we are also, at the same time, I'm able to run a trading bot in a centralized exchange, so I can balance the trade so if I, if I sell Komodo from my local wallet, at, at the same time I can buy Komodo from the central exchange. So then uh, I can offer the liquidity, get the liquidity from the central exchange. And if, if the balance gets too distorted in the local wallet, mm -hmm. then I can withdraw from the central exchange to my local wallet and bal balance the two pools, keep them like balanced. Okay. And, and that way, like, we can offer, get liquidity from any central exchange. Like this, okay. this, this move in circle, you know, from, yeah. from DEX over liquidity provider over to the centralized exchanges and so on, like he explained. And that with the time that will move bigger amounts and bigger liquidity from the centralized exchanges over to the, to the yeah. liquidity provider. So even, even if, it, oh sorry, so even if it's, uh, if uh, the liquidity provider is buying from the exchange, it still remains decentralized. I mean, in a way, right? Uh, the way uh, the system works, yeah. it's still keeping everything yeah. decentralized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the user who, who buys through the decentralized exchange, he won't have any risk. He is not dealing with the central exchange. It's just the liquidity provider node can choose to also have mm -hmm. used the central exchange and then as a liquidity provider, I would be carrying the risk of the central exchange. And, uh, but I, I think like w what provides liquidity in the uh, old uh, cent uh, decentralized exchange is also that at the same time, it's like a wallet. 
so I will store my yeah. coins locally and it's safe for me to store. Nothing can happen. Yeah. yeah. So I can like have my bank basically yeah. at the same time, like offering liquidity. Exactly. So it's it's not the same mm. same I could think. If I want to provide liquidity in the central exchange, I would have to risk my balance mm -hmm. and send it there. Yeah. 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 So basically, with the time, if a lot of users using that, we could see a really big portion of the whole Komodo market cap being liquid yeah. for the dense decentralized exchange. So that's some, some future vision, so which I'm sure will will move into the direction. And I, I think what, what you earlier mentioned that the innovate innovation of our decentralized exchange that you can like the input output of what exactly that's so basically so I, I, I out of fun called it Schrodinger's uh, <laughs> output because yeah you have uh, so I, I think like at least same explained to me that we can uh, like we can, if I have Bitcoin, I can put many Bitcoin by orders. In different orders and yeah. use them multiple. Exactly, yeah. that was what I was saying. So Schrodinger's input. So we can use it for multiple things at the same time. So something, a paradox, some sort of paradox, but it's possible because we just say like the moment you look what's happening, something happens. That's when basically you evaluate the status and either it's sold or you used it for another transaction or whatever. But it's self-regulating yeah. on the blockchain, fully secured. So, so you, yeah. you could use one BTC for uh, for a possible uh, volume yeah. of ten thousand bitcoins on different right. markets. So yeah. So if I use really like, one. if I have one bitcoin and I would like to buy Litecoin or Komodo in certain certain price, like I can just place two pi orders for yeah. the, with the same money, yeah. Yeah. and then whichever goes first is first I will yeah. that will, will execute and cancel the other the yeah. other stuff yeah. that's that's a main yeah. key feature Ma maybe innovation. that was the uh, like yesterday James published us for some killer feature okay no one no one read it I think uh, I made a post <laughs> I posted under it like uh, Schrodinger's input but I think not many many people understood what I meant with that yeah. but like yeah. Schrodinger's cat you know like it could be dead and alive mm. at the same time yeah. unless you check the status yeah, maybe it was that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have already contacts with with uh, altcoins uh, leaders? Uh, because uh, we can be uh, uh, a wallet, uh, an official wallet for yeah. some of them. Yeah, yeah, sure. And because uh, it's important to promote us uh, to Litecoin, I think Litecoin has uh, a nice future. I hope. I don't have any, but <laughs> I hope for them. Yeah, but if, if we can have a more uh, community, because right now when I speak about uh, Supernet or Komodo, they think it's nothing to do with uh, Litecoin or Bitcoin and uh, everything. And yeah. I explain that uh, it's a connection between uh, the different communities. Okay. Okay. They don't know about it. And do you have... Uh, because if you have a nice tweet from uh, Jen, uh, the, the leader of Litecoin, yeah. uh, you can have a lot of visibility. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a, that's the plan. Like we we are like want to make sure that the recommendation is clear, uh, like how to set up the liquidity provider node. Because the, we will then once once we have all everything set up, then we will approach the different coin communities and explain to them that they can they can be added to our decentralized exchange and and they can be running a liquidity provider node to offer liquidity to, to their own coin mm -hmm. so basically they uh, that's a win win for both parties yeah, so yeah, they take yeah. they they have been a new exchange yeah, so and the best business is not it's to provide service for the community and they provide visibility for us yeah, and uh, yeah. use new users yeah. I think we're still in development stage, so we still have some work for Agama. Yeah. But once we reach a really stable level, I think that even a lot of other communities are going to contact us. Being mm. added to Agama, being part of the native Dex ecosystem, so I see that coming. That, that's all coming. Yeah. We're already having a lot of collaborations going on, so it's just a matter of time. Yeah, yeah already I think we there's some, some small coin communities we, we have been in contact 
Hän, hän uskoo uh, Syskainissa, uh, Partner of Supernet on really a creed. It's mm-hmm. gonna be on Nakama Wallet and yeah. have a Pazidisk mode. We, we are also part of each other. Yeah. yeah. Like, for example, we hold like 1% of the ten, top 10 coins. Yeah. So, but, uh, and I think there is some community, old community in cryptocurrency that uh, are active in uh, Litecoin, uh, for example. Like yeah. it's a, a I know what you mean, it's an old community. And I think uh, it can make a, a connection uh, between this, this old community that should be rich, I think, and uh, the new ones, uh, because yeah, we have some wave, we have some uh, uh, different uh, yeah, coin, Syscoin yeah. and yeah. everything. But that's new uh, project, yeah, mm-hmm. Rel- relatively new. Mm. I think it's, it could be good. And I like Doge. <laughs> I think we have Dogecoin, right? On a Gamma wallet? We, yeah. we have Doge. We yeah. have Doge available. Yeah. Fully uh, implemented. If, yeah. if the, the Doge coin supporter uh, use a Gamma as this... Uh, Officially endorsed uh, wallet. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway. yeah. That's yeah, a, but this Agama wallet, like we don't want to push it too hard yet because it's not there. So yeah. we don't want to like go to the Dogecoin community and way too early. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's too early. Yeah. So future, future, future. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's coming. Better it's be, it, it has to be done. So. Exactly. Yeah. First do the work, and then once the tech is really yeah. stable, we do the rest. So. Yeah, and where? Which Tuesday? Sorry. Which Tuesday? The next. Next Tuesday. Ah, next <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> um, about the, the smart contracts. Yeah. Like how, how much time do you think it will take to polish that to where projects are going to start coming in and, and launching the projects off the Well, con- conceptual work has already been done a lot. We had a lot of discussion with Aldo, with James in regard of this topic. So. Uh, well, our plan was to, to provide agnostic-free way of implementing smart contracts, but we still need some sort of, 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 of syntax method to, to implement the Turing-complete code. So it should be able to implement any logic which could be implemented on a Turing machine to be able to like run a contract and have... But the way we're going to parse those contracts we're going to run them, we're going to keep them running, we're going to ensure the blockchain regulates them. It's not 100% set yet. So we have still a little bit of conceptual work to do. But I, I see something for the roadmap of the coming year. So this year we really have a lot of, of basal work still to do. So it's still all experimental software. Zcash same. So, so basically we're even a little bit far than many of the other kinds. So we are supporting all platforms without any problems. We help the we helped basically Zcash users with their own wallet implementation because they had problems when we already were running there. So, but I say it's something we are working on hard. So, we are hiring new C C++ developers, which are going first uh, to do some some outstanding work on the Guano Core and Komodo, and then trying to pull them over to this area, smart contracts and decentralized self-regulating organizations. Because that's uh, yeah, it's a big, big thing, big topic. It's very important. Yeah, maybe one of the weaknesses of Supernet has always been the documenting it, the information is just they're not so easily available or not available at all. So it's hard for developer to come and use our technology. So it's mostly just our own developers building mm-hmm. the decentralized mm-hmm. applications with, with our platform. But now we are li- really trying to find and hire new people because we, we got uh, money. So it's just a matter of finding the right people and hiring them and get the documentation done and and maybe find some exactly. C developer. Some, some yeah. skilled developers. Yeah. Yeah. Developer, finding developers is not that hard, but you really need skilled people yeah. with a good learning curve, being able to acquire new knowledge on their own. So that's, that's hard. That's the hard part always I'm facing when looking for, for good people. Uh, thanks God we have now Rick. He's not here, unfortunately. He's, he's, he's new support guy. Well, he, he does a lot. He's going to write the whole API documentation for Supernet, for Iguana Core. And on top of that, going to manage and maintain all block explorers. So it's a young guy, OIT student. 
And that, that, that are the people I'm, I'm looking for, the people who contact me, who from their own want to do something, change something, like the makers. So and that's what Supernet consists of, the Supernet team. So if, if a developer is interested in participating, they would just contact you or Otto and they can... Exactly, yeah. You can join us and prove their skills, start working with us. So we're, we're open for any time. So always 24-7 available, me or Otto. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, either. Yeah. How can totally new people who are interested uh, in uh, our project and think uh, Kodo, uh, Komodo can add something to the crypto environment and they think, you know, I want to join mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. basically right uh, mm -hmm. through the ecosystem, uh, how, how, is it easy, uh, how is it for them possible to, to buy a part of... Uh, like how to become part of Supernet? Yes, exactly. Well, I think I, I can answer it because Please. Basically, that was what I, I did. Please, that's your work, yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't have any special skills. I'm not a developer. I'm not been any before, like, part of any marketing team. Uh, and so I was just interested and hanging in the community. And uh, just when I saw something that there's a way to contribute, so I did some graphics uh, and stuff like that. And th th uh, yeah, and yeah, and a lot of people have seen it. Maybe a really complex, <laughs> seems complex chart, and and yeah, th that's how y you get like your leg into the community and the project. And when you offer something valuable, then then like uh, we can pay bounties, and and then like you just when you p become part of it, you will see other things, other problems that need solving and. And, and there, mm -hmm. there you go, and mm -hmm. then, then all of a sudden you're like working full time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it goes so fast. Like, like when yeah. you participate, like he said, you will be recognized from us. Like we see who is, who is yeah. active, who is trying to do something. That is the way, like he explained, so that is the way somebody sees who brings something valuable. It's, it's a give and take. It's like oh, in life always, everything comes back. Okay. Yeah. So like even like now we, there's need for someone to if someone really interested about what we do, so they can like study it and then if they are able to try to communicate it in written form or make infographic or something. I mean, that there's a huge need for this, so anyone could do it mm -hmm. and try try to write it down or something. Yeah. Where can they find the information if they want to buy Komodo? Want to for to buy? Yeah. Uh, we are actually gonna do a guide, or we actually have, but I have been so busy that it's not published yet. We have, we have like a basic guide of how to buy Komodo, how to buy Bitcoin. <laughs> so we, we will have a knowledge base, which can be found from currently from support.supernet.org. So we, we will put all guides there. So, so supernet.org you have to go to for the information? Uh, support.supernet.org. And, and in the future, it will be available on all the uh, domains and also support that Komodo platform .com. And then they can find out the guides there, so how to, how to buy Komodo. And, and even we will try to answer based questions like how to secure investment, how to make a paper wallet and the like basic, uh, basics of cryptocurrencies. And, just make it easy for people to start using our, our yeah. product, products and services. We have a lot of work, so we got also new information on the website and it will get, get updated, right? Yeah, sure. Sure. Always. Hey, Philippe, you had the question? About the, the delayed proof of work. Uh, what happens if uh, the blockchain then pool is saturated and the uh, fees stay skyrocketing for a long period? Is it a bad solution? Or? I, I know what you're... Well, we, we wanted to realize it on Bitcoin because it has far the, the biggest security in, in regards of the hash rate. So uh, we're, we're looking at that. We're, we're looking at it, how this uh, develops, everything. But we're pretty confident that it's starting to move into the right direction. So I think all will be good. So that's my, my, my objective opinion. But you too, I think I don't see any issues with our delayed proof of work system at the moment. 
Well, I, but because they're considering the using, you know? using like Litecoin, like if because if the, 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 the transaction no fees are coming, yeah, because it's yeah, too high. Yeah, yeah, so it's possible to just change to like Litecoin, if if like the blocks are full if in it's Bitcoin not, yeah. and it if gets. If there is no resolution, yeah. we have a backup plan. Yeah. We're going to just switch it. So we we optimize. We are able to optimize. We we always optimize it. Take the the best possible solution. For us, the technic and the community. So that's what yeah. we focus on. There's always plan B. Yeah, <laughs> always. And C, and even C. <laughs> super net optimized. Okay, super. So thank you for your attention. The, the interesting, there were a lot of interesting questions. And hope to, to hold something like this uh, soon again. Yeah, thank, yeah. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this will give so many views. Okay, oh. I know the real question. <laughs> <laughs> what about Wait, next or the light car related? Uh, uh, Commodore. Okay. <laughs> we have. What do we do? We do a part two. <laughs> no, we, we have uh, <laughs> behind the scenes, you know. The project at uh, is the a point of failure. It's hmm? James. Because yeah, James uh, makes the technology and he owns the the the, 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 the private key for all the the funds. And what if James disappears? We even have plan Bs for that situation. And just again, because I was facing this question or this sort of of, of talks at all expos everywhere, you know, there are countries, there are places in this world. You can't just have a lot of wealth. It's not possible. If authorities and, and officials get to know about this wealth, it, this control will take away from you of this wealth. So not only financial circumstances, but especially the political and economical circumstances of some countries on this planet just don't allow you to, 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 yeah, to disclose yourself, your identity, your real world identity. When you're doing a project like that, you no. couldn't keep the focus on that or and or or do anything. So it's yeah, but that's I important. I think, uh, yeah, and James for example, funds like like Supernet, ICO funds, and so we have we have a, uh, we have like multi-signature wallet, mm -hmm. and I know I know a, I know a key holder personally in Vienna, yeah. Paul, from from Bitpanda. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's one of so the, the key holders. So also found are. Uh, so controlled by multi signature wallets. So, yeah, two out of three I signature don't see rights. This we have two for example. We have we have uh, two out of three, yeah. We yeah. have a two out of three multi signature wallet for, for project funds. That's we 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 really we we have plan B for just everything. So And I think like in the long term that's why we are developing the Commodore smart contracts. Right, eh? Exactly. And we will move everything into smaller yeah. contracts, like this contract's going to regulate the salaries of our employees. Yeah. One contract's going to, to fund long term whatever of the yeah. So we're we're going to make because it all you know uh, a few days uh, ago. Yes. Uh, Jeff promised some uh, dividend uh, with uh, Jumbler uh, assets, with a snapshot uh, of uh, mm -hmm. the and he takes some uh, of the account on NXT, the, the hoarded uh, account, and uh, the yeah. animal owner. He, he, he controls uh, the things, he controls a lot. Just James controls. He did good. A lot yeah. of he did good. Uh, if James didn't keep this control, this thing would have split up like a puzzle with the no, time. In the mean, last I two, agree, three years. I, you mean, I know what he's talking no, about. No, I, I mean, we don't, we don't want a singular point of failure. Yeah. But I, I think that there's precautions against that, regardless, right? I mean, yeah. there, I don't think that he controls pretty much. No, the no, no. Yeah. There is a lot going on behind the curtain right. you're not all aware of, but really, so he doesn't have the full control of everything. That's, honestly, he doesn't control the wallets you're all running or something like that. L the end product, which lands at the user's uh, computer, it's not in control of James. Like, like we build it decentralized on a Jenkins platform, and it's it's all open source. So there is really no yeah. no okay. no need to worry about anything okay. in regards of that. Yeah. But very good and interesting, but, uh, yeah, an important you know, question. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, it's friends, important. It's yeah, really yeah, important. Yeah. For, for any money, you could do a lot of damage. For this, any this is. 
really important question. Perhaps he lives in a dangerous ca country for him, and uh, he can. Is it this is fair? Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, it's, yeah, it's a risk. Can, uh, can sure, we could all, we could all disagree. Yeah. Yeah, but that's why I'm, I'm curious e about even that because a lot of mm -hmm. uh, pressure are on the on James uh, back shoulders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a lot of pressure, a lot of stress, and I think no, because I trust James, uh, I follow. I trust I, him too. I'm holding uh, his assets since a few years. Super. No, but we're really <laughs> asking so much. It's questions. the right question. We're really working on the, uh, this aspect to make things really as transparent as possible yeah. and to try to, to yeah, try to help James with, uh, with, with, with all this responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Great. a lot of control is yeah. also a lot it's of perfect. responsibility, and yeah. we're splitting because, the spread. Because I think his role is to be the creative <laughs> guy. Uh, yeah, yeah. And could, uh, he's giving a lot of control over to us, so. No. Extremely. If you, if you look at the other side of the coin, we look at Bitcoin and look at what they're doing. It is a completely they're centralized form yeah. of centralization, and one single guy could do huge damage to yeah. to, to Bitcoin if if wanted. Really, you have to take it like that. It's like that, though. And yeah, so I don't I don't see big problems. So I, I, yeah, I think like Supernet quite horizontally structured, and but it's not really like this decentralized organization like DAO. It's not yet. Not yet, no. Yeah, not yet. like the technology is not there, so we could like be, there's no way to really decentralize the funds yeah, yeah. or stuff like but that. But that's coming. No, no, yeah. it's okay. So we we have what we have the best best we can do now, and then la wait that the Komodo platform matures and we get the smart contracts, and then we can turn Supernet into like smart organization <laughs> okay. using our own technology. I think that's a vision. What yeah, goal. we have, the end goal we're yeah. going. but we, but like we, we have a lot of funds. There's a lot of stake. We don't, in any case, we don't want to rush it. Like like we, what we saw with yeah. the with the DAO. Oh, yeah. 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 So no, no. we we don't want to risk it. Slow it has to be tested. We we, we, exactly. we want to make sure what we yeah, do yeah, it, exactly. it works. Yeah. You answered too much. Yeah. Thank you. Super question. Awesome. Great. So more that was the that was the the. Yeah, that's yeah. The backstage talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs>